Finance Minister Arun Jaitley gave the real estate sector a much-needed fill-up in this time's budget. Jaitley announced tax incentives for real estate investment trusts, a market that's estimated to be anywhere right between $20 and $25 billion. But what are real estate investment trusts, or REITs, as they're popularly called? And how does this really work? To decode all of this, I'm joined by Anuj Puri, uh, country head at JLLM. Um, Anuj, thanks so much for joining us on, uh, on Bloomberg. Let me begin by broadly asking you about what you made of the budget proposal, specifically with respect to the real estate sector, uh, the push on affordable housing and so on. What did you make of it? I was absolutely delighted. You know, after four or five years, we had heard real estate being spoken about in the uh, budget. Uh, and for the first half an hour, it appeared like it was a real estate budget. Uh, you know, I had a year to year smile uh, on that. We, he spoke about real estate investment trusts. He spoke about private equity, you know, the threshold getting down from 50,000 square meters to 20,000 square meters and minimum investment going away from 10 million to 5 million. And there was a huge amount of focus then he put on the affordable housing and a number of schemes that he's got in, which hopefully will start to excite the developer community. So really three broad things, affordable housing, private equity getting further liberalized for real estate, and then the big one was the REITs, real estate investment trusts. Talk about REITs, Anuj. You know, uh, I understand, and, I, and we've been talking to a couple of developers before the budget happened, and they were saying this is going to be a big kicker, it'll open up another source of capital and so on. Uh, how do you think this is going to work? Yeah, so, so let me just explain to you. Uh, you know, the total grade A office stock available in India is about 350 million square feet, out of which 100 million square feet can be straight away rated out. Mm. And the 100 million square feet, if you were to look at an average selling price, it's about $10 billion. So $10 billion of office stock which is on the balance sheet of the developers, can actually be listed on the stock market straight away. Mm. And that can then be bought over by retail investors, institutional investors. And that money then comes back to the developers in the form of equity, mm. with which they'll be able to pay the huge leverage that is sitting on their balance sheets to the banks. Mm. So two things will happen is, one, the debt on their balance sheet will come down because they'll use that money to pay to the banks. Mm. And second is a part of that money will come back into the real estate sector so that these developers can continue to expand. What the position is happening today is that there's a huge amount of real estate office stock which is sitting on the balance sheet of these developers, which they're not really able to liquidate it. Mm. And the REITs will help that bring the necessary liquidity. One other benefit is gonna happen is, look, at, at the end of the day, this $10 billion or 60,000 crores that can be rated out immediately will also go to the banks. Mm. And you know, the liquidity in the banks will also increase so that they can further lend to the real estate sector. Sure. Uh, let me ex push this a little further, Anuj. You know, so uh, it, 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 it help me understand. So individual asset of, let's say, a DLF or, or whichever real estate company, uh, these individual assets can be listed and how different is it from, I understand some of these companies have their uh, REIT listed in, in Singapore and so on. Uh, how, so will it have to be on an exchange? Uh, do, we, do we know details on those fronts? Yeah, absolutely. So this is under the SEBI guidelines. Mm. It is a listed entity on the Indian stock market. And you're absolutely right, these will be buildings. So these are completed office buildings mm. or retail buildings, which are fully leased out. And those are the ones that get listed. So if you look at the risk, it's very low because mm. it's fully constructed with all the approvals and fully tenanted out. Mm. So, the, so you list it on the stock market and then there is a dividend that comes in and the dividend is in the form of the monthly rent mm. that the tenants in that building are paying. And that the dividend is then sent is then distributed to the unit holders, mm. and the unit holders are these retail investors. Mm. And you know, retail investors have tried to play first in the real estate market through the IPO mm. of the various developers that happened, and you know, the experience has been sort of mixed on that because there was a huge amount of risk in development because these were large parcels of land that the developers had bought and they were going to build it and either it got delayed or the approvals didn't come through or the expectation of the price didn't, didn't match. Sure. Here, you're buying relatively risk-free because you're only buying completed buildings and fully tenanted out. But Anush, you know, is this open to retail investors or will this be 
uh, will there be a threshold of the minimum minimum uh, you know level of investments will this be for ultra hnis and so on or, or are you saying this will be broadly for the retail investor it will be open for retail investors but you know my thought is one it's going to probably take nine months before uh, you know the scheme really hits uh, the market sure. i also believe is that the institutional investors both domestic and foreign perhaps will be the first ones to come in sure. i think retail investor will look at the scheme try to decipher understand equally you know many of the retail investors have burned their hands in real estate right. you know particularly on the stock side right. so i think they're going to be a bit more skeptic to see is how this entire scheme works and then then they'll come in so i don't see that the first rush is going to come in from the retail investors. I think first rush will come in from foreign f institutional funds, foreign sure. banks, Indian institutional funds, and they are the ones who are going to take advantage of the REIT structure. Sure, sure, point taken. Do you see real estate companies lining up to, uh, you know, to, to tap capital through this route immediately? So, so, you know, the 100 million square feet that can be REITed out is with 18 developers. Mm. So I clearly see those 18 developers wanting to hit the Indian stock market pretty much, you know, within, within the next 12 months. Mm. I will, however, put one caveat. Mm. You know, as we are deciphering what the taxation impact is going to be, you know, it does appear that listing on Singapore stock market may still be more advantageous for India, Indian developers to do a REIT than the Indian stock market. So, you know, whilst we're still going through the fine print, you know, what is becoming abundantly, you know, clear is that if Singapore stock market is going to be more advantageous, why, then, why do, why do you, you know, say is that this Arush? a dud scheme why that has been that? started? So, I, I think we, because, you know, at this, at this moment in time, the way, and again, I say, you know, we're still sort of deciphering this, but as I read it, it does appear that the taxation on the scheme, although you know the the finance minister has said is that it's a pass through, but the other taxation that is being levied, you know, at the end of the day, the unit holder is going to get a much lower return mm. than what a unit holder will get on the Singapore stock market, and hence that reflects the the listing price for the developer. So, so you know, I, I I'm just putting that one caveat because it did. Uh, this morning, as we were deciphering, you know, how the tax is now working, going through the fine print, it is appearing that the that the tax structure is not going to be as conducive or helpful to list these at the Indian stock market. So I'm sure, you know, there'll be certain clarifications that will be seeked. Sure. And if that clarification goes in the favor, then it's going to be good. Otherwise, you know, my fear is that it should not become another FDI in retail kind sure. of a scenario. Sure. I have one final question, Anuja. This is with respect to, you know, uh, how are you seeing demand and price playing out in urban pockets like Mumbai and Delhi, specifically for commercial? So commercial has come back pretty much mm. uh, in there, and you know I'm very excited on on that. The demand has on the multinational side, it's at the peak activity. Mm. On the Indian side, it is you know still sort of gaining momentum. Mm. Uh, but what is going in favor of the developers is that there is no new construction on the office market that is coming up, and hence the rents have started to climb. Mm. I think my worry is largely on the luxury residential in the two markets that you identified, Delhi and Bombay, not as much now on the commercial side.